Hey everyone, I'm meteorologist Mark Collins here and we're getting some new information in on the missing boaters but I want to really talk about the meteorology that goes into this whole situation, how um, things could go bad and how they could possibly find out where the rescue crew should look first. Uh, so we're getting a word that this search has expanded to 20,000 miles from basically the Port Canaveral area all the way up to Charleston, South Carolina. So I was looking at uh, what's called the Navy HICAM uh, HICOM model and what that does is it shows the speed of the Gulf Stream. So if this boat uh, moved off the coastline and became dispowered, uh, the, trying to predict where the currents would move the boat really depends on how far offshore it was because when we take a look at the Gulf Stream it's about 35 miles east of Cape Canaveral and in that area the wind the current is much stronger than closer to the shore so let's just say uh, this boat broke down within 20 or 30 miles from shore. Well, this yellow area here, this is the search where they would be focused on this evening between uh, basically the Playa Linda Beach area to Daytona Beach uh, off of Volusia County here because this uh, northerly current would be pushing the boat into this general vicinity. However, um, chances are uh, with the westerly winds that have been uh, blowing off the coastline, the distressed boat would likely be out here in the Gulf Stream where the current is much much stronger in this area so uh, anywhere in uh, off our coastline of Jacksonville that's probably the most likely location over the past 48 hours where this uh, vessel would be at this time of the evening here so uh, that's about uh, 60 to 70 miles off our coastline right now and so it's well offshore of the Jacksonville area but again the uh, latest word is that they're going to keep this uh, search going through the evening tonight and it will actually encompass all of the Carolina coastline. Let's take you back through Friday and show you when they went offshore uh, it was kind of a deceiving situation the seas were very calm there wasn't much rain if they had broken down Saturday evening, watch this squall line that comes through. I'm going to take my face off of here. This was uh, Saturday night around 6.30. And uh, we had right here within this band of rain that came through, those were 40 mile per hour winds. There was a buoy uh, just there off of Cape Canaveral that me measured 37 mile per hour winds. So anytime a vessel is without power, um, it can't point its bow into the direction of the waves and if you take waves over the transom the stern of the boat that could sink a boat that's the worst case situation and look at all these westerly winds you see those streamlines here that makes the seas very flat when oftentimes uh, boaters get a uh, false sense of security because it's so calm out there if they're not checking the weather and making sure storms don't uh, run offshore they could run into some problems and get pushed out there into the Gulf Stream so waves are this evening are about a foot. They've been a foot here through the weekend and uh, there have been some areas of uh, squally weather off the coastline um, and uh, hopefully you know they're they're still uh, okay and they just can't get communication out because they're beyond the range of cell phone and maybe their VHF uh, radio has uh, powered down with a lack of battery power. Um, if there was an overboard situation, what we're looking at here is water temperatures, which are about 85 degrees in the Gulf Stream. Some cores, uh, some core sections of the Gulf Stream are as warm as 87. Notice the blue color here right along our coastline. This is due to the westerly winds. These are colder than normal water temperatures. Uh, you're getting a little bit of upwelling there around Port Canaveral. Water temperature is a cool 78 degrees, and if you think 78 is warm, it is when you go to the beach and you dip your toes in the water for a little bit, no problem, but if you're a man overboard situation and you're floating for 24 hours or more, that can core, cool down the core body temperature below 98.6 degrees and you can what's uh, suffer from uh, hypothermia in the water even though the water is that um, that warm so it's called warm water hypothermia let's hope that's not the situation and let's hope that they are still aboard their vessel and they just can't communicate um, but you know a 24 foot boat like that uh, is very small uh, fortunately we're not seeing any major storms rolling off the coastline tonight and if they can survive the next couple of days more of an onshore southeasterly wind would tend to uh, direct that 
floating vessel back towards the west. So again, we're going to have much more coming up here on News for Jacks uh, starting tonight at 10. They are going to reiterate some of those facts that I gave you that's coming out from the uh, search crews and uh, our interests and thoughts and uh, best wishes are for those folks out there in the water. All right.